everyone, Mark from Haunted Auckland and Paranormal New Zealand. Um, here we are at uh, episode 7 now and we are going across to the states now. We're going to be talking to Timothy Morsh. Timothy Morsh is the founder and lead investigator for Wayland Supernatural Society over in New York. Are you there Timothy? There's a little bit of a lag there, I think, but um, hey, you're a long way away, so it doesn't matter. It's probably my internet. Yeah, yeah. So how are you, Timothy? How are you? Well, I'm doing um, pretty um, good. Are you in lockdown at the moment? Not at the moment. Okay, cool. You're walking. Cool. So you're the um, so you you're a um, paranormal investigator over there in uh, Wayland, New York. Oh yes, I am. So you you the founder of of that group? Yes, I am. Sweet. You're something that I use. That's awesome, man. It's called a PDA. With um, an IR light, and that IR light is kind of expensive, and the IR light is two uh, hundred dollars. Who makes those? It's called um, you can look it on Facebook. It's called the Dead Light. The Dead Light. So who and makes it that? takes like about takes some about six months. Oh really? Sweet. So how did you get into the paranormal, man? Well, um, here's a, a story. Ever since I was growing up, ever since I was a kid, put it that way. Yeah. I have lots and lots of experiences. Shadows banging on the walls. Let's see, um, my own house is haunted. I'm still living in it. They don't bother me. They're protecting me. So how long have you had your team? Let's say about like three years or so. Really? And you've done quite a few investigations? Oh, yes. Lots of them. Uh, you got to tell us, man. What, what are some of the better ones you've been to there? I got... The, um, I went to Wildwood. Yeah. Wildwood, San Minka. Wildwood, San Antonio. That's what it is. And here's the thing. Lots of people keep telling me I'm so lucky because I always catch something. I don't know why, but the same two attract to me. You're just in the right place at the right time? Yes, and I found two shadows. People shadows with a four-legged animal. Um, I had a attachment. I had to get a cleansing because I was so stupid not doing any protection and, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. I've been to the Hinsdale house. But the Hinsdale house, I had an exorcism performed and it never worked. So how many investigations have you done? 
So, yeah, it, yeah. Let's say I won like I don't know thirty plus. And are they sort of in your own area? Yes, but most of them is at the Hinsdale House. Right. Why would? Same thing over and 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 over, and over, and over again. So the Hinsdale House is worth going to, you think? Yes, if you want to see something paranormal, I recommend Hinsdale House in Wirewood, which they are 20 minutes away from each other. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking of coming over um, in a couple of years, so I'm looking for places and locations that I can go and investigate while I'm over there. They are $300 a night. Okay. You can actually spend the night. Alone? Alone, up to six people. That sounds good to me. I'll put that on my list. <laughs> I'll invite you along. How about that? Yep. <laughs> it's like an hour and 15 minutes for me. Okay. Cool. What's your best piece of equipment? Oh, my best piece of equipment. This is my favorite. Uh, is that the one that gives you the most evidence? Yes. Cool. It's a cell phone, actually, which is mounted on a holder with a stand with an IR light. It looks pretty cool. Yes, it is, and you can do Facebook Lives for that. Oh, really? Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, paranormal TV shows? Do you follow them? Um, do you think that they're a big help in the paranormal field, or do you think they're a bit of a hindrance and they sort of give a lot of false truths? One of them that I don't go by is, what's that show called? Most adventures with Zach in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghost Adventures, that's what it is. You like that one? No, I don't. A lot of faking going on. Yes, a lot of faking and everything. And isn't it strange that he gets possessed nearly every episode? I think that's why I stopped watching it. Yes, strange. Mm. Why would you want to be possessed like that? I wouldn't. I don't think he really is possessed. I use these for protection. Okay. Like a black formalin and stuff. I use black salt, holy water, sage, stuff like that. Right. So protection is quite important to you? Oh yes, it's very important. Yeah. yeah. Right. Have you ever experienced anything that sort of made you realize how important protection is? So, this is when I did not use any protection. It was at the Hinsdale house. My first time when I got home, I fell asleep the next day. I felt like I wasn't myself. I was like there for a few months being watched. I was angry with other people. I was angry with my parents. And I had to get a cleansing and everything. And ever since I got that cleansing, I felt much better. And I wasn't myself. So I use protection on every investigation before and after. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, I wanted to ask also, if there's anybody in this paranormal field that you would like to work with, like any, I don't know, anybody famous out there that you would like, or anybody, that, anybody that's inspired you that you would like to work with on an investigation? 
Well, I worked with a person name. His name is the Pickle Man. We <laughs> call him the Pickle Man. Yeah. He he's the owner of the Hinsdale House. Right. And we did a few investigations and he's funny and everything. The pickle man likes pickles and everything. And here's a story. We asked the house to say the word pickle in the spirit box. And it said pickle. Did you record it? No, I didn't. <laughs> but somebody else did. Oh, really? Oh, so that, okay, good, good. As long as it's documented somewhere. It's the most scariest thing at the Hansdale house. It was a public group. It was a camp out that we do every year. It's called, it was up in Mary's room. Mary room, I don't want to go in there. It's dangerous. There's like a portal in there. And a person was closing their eyes with blindfold, speaking words, listen to a spirit box. And behind her, it looks like a skull with horns and with a, like a jacket or something. Wow. And we had to get the heck out of there. That's wow. That's wild. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, but scary at the same time. Yeah. The theory that ghosts are made up of energy and draw upon energy to manifest. What do you feel about that theory? Do you think that's a valid theory? Do you think it's a good theory? Yes, that is possible. Um, here's the thing. I can pick up on lots of energy on investigations. I can pick up on energies, people's energies. I can see the future, what's going to happen. Are you psychic, are you? No, I'm not psychic, but I know what's going to happen because I have dreams about them. Right. And they always come true. And about the COVID-19 that's going on, I knew this was going to happen because spirits tell me things what's going to happen in the future. Right. So you think maybe that spirits exist in the future as well as present day? That they can yes. go back to the boards? Yes. That's an interesting concept. So that would make ghosts interdimensional, perhaps. They can travel through yes. time. Yeah. You see, a lot of people would agree with that, that they think that um, ghosts are possibly interdimensional and they can travel through different dimensions, through time, through space. It's uh, it's an interesting um, theory, which I've never really spent much time on. But um, yeah, it's interesting what you're saying. And for anybody that's wanting to start up a, um, a team or get into paranormal investigation, can you offer them some tips? What would you recommend people do if they want to start off? Well, if you want to start an investigation, you don't need expensive equipment. You just need a flashlight, a recorder, and a camera. That's all you need. That's right. And you can investigate just like that. If your you eyes, want, ears, and your yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I think a lot of teams try and get too technical. They try and get too um, complicated with things. 
I think they need to strip it back, right back, and just use the basics. Yes, I try to go old school, like um, flashlights, yes and no questions. Um, I tell them to try to move the ball. Yeah. I use laser grids. I caught a few shadows blocking the laser grids. It's all on my website that I have up. Yeah, I'll put the link for your website on this video so people can go and check you out. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, no, no, we'll, we'll stick it out there for you. We'll promote you guys. I mean, that's what I'm doing this for. But, um, pretty much what I'm doing is um, is I'm using my lockdown time because I can't really go out there and investigate. So I'm spending my time now just networking with other paranormal investigators and just catching up with you guys and just sort of saying, hey, what are you doing? And how's it going over there? You know, and just basically letting people over here know about what you guys are doing over there. Yeah, so it's um, that's it's been really nice. Pretty really sweet. Nice talk yeah, I've been talking to lots of um, other researchers. And it's been really good just hearing how they do things because that's how we learn. That's how we learn to do things is by sharing with other teams and other researchers. Yes, I've learned a lot. That's correct. Yeah. I've learned a lot from listening to other people like yourself, you know. I, I learn little yeah. bits and pieces of information. That's I can really go cool. on all day and all well, night long talking about paranormal. Same. I love it. It's a great field to be in and and you're always learning, eh? Because there's there's not many facts. There's not a lot that we do know. It's a very big unknown. So it's the whole... Yeah, and here's the thing. Yeah. Here's another topic. Yeah. If somebody wants to pay to investigate at your own house and remove a spirit, that's a scam the fake yep. who would pay to remove somebody some spear a band spear in your home that's right i agree i agree to me my my opinion on all that is that we can't be charging people money we can't be charging money when we don't really know what it is we're dealing with because we don't really know what ghosts really are we don't know what they are we, 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 we might see them, we might interact with them, we might hear them and take photographs of them, but we don't actually know what they are. We don't know anything about them. And that's part of our journey is learning about what they are. So I don't think it's ethical to be charging people when we don't really know ourselves what we're dealing with. Yes, you don't charge people. Yeah. Except um, I pay like 300 to go to the Hinsdale house. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I can understand paying to get into a location, a historical location, because they have their expenses. Um, they need money to survive. I can understand that. But if it's a private residence, you know, I wouldn't charge anybody for a private in their home. Yeah, me neither. Um, there was a website I was looking at and they charged five hundred dollars for to remove bad spirits in your home and stuff. Yeah. I messaged uh, the guy and asked him nicely why are you charging? And he never got back to me. Yeah. Of course. I was just asking him a nice way. Try to be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I don't really agree with it myself. I think one day, you know, one day when we when we are able to interact with ghosts and we know all about them and we know what they are and we can communicate one on one all the time and it's a, a natural thing where we can actually sit down with a ghost and talk to them and learn about I them. I can do that sometimes on investigation. Yeah. yeah. I but can if I asked you talk to them. If I asked you to t uh, to tell me what a ghost is made of and what proof you have and have you, you know, how actual facts, you, uh, you couldn't give them to me, could you? 
No, I couldn't no. give them to me. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I mean. It's um, it's not. We're not dealing with um actual facts. We're dealing with what we think might be right, but we don't know if it's right. If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I believe these spirits are here because they have unfinished business to take care of. Mm. Yeah, I think they're just like people. Um, they have their reasons for being, and I think. Some will come back for, as you say, for unfinished business. Some will just be lost, perhaps, that they don't know they're in a whole new place when they die. They possibly go to some weird place that they've got no idea where they are, so they're lost. Um, so I think a lot of them just drift, but, and they're confused, and they don't know where they are and what they're doing. They, maybe they don't realize that they're dead. I don't know. Yeah, I talked to... Um spirits and try to understand and talk to them and see if they can go to the light mm. yeah i think it's important if you can talk to them it is important to do so yes but i think I, I have a feeling i mean I, I i imagine that they would be quite lonely yes they could get quite lonely And I just talk to them one on one once in a while. I get to see them once in a while. I just talk to them. The spirits that you talk to, um, do they just appear as, you know, do they talk to you like they were just normal people in the past? With, you know, well, um, yeah, with jobs and families and, and you know, are they the go? Well, yeah, are they, do they act just like normal people would? Sometimes, yeah, I talk to them just like normal people. Sometimes I just get a glimpse of a shadow. Sometimes, here's the thing: I see them at work, at home. I see them whenever I go, and I talk to them whenever I go. And they are protecting me. The same people? Are they the same spirits? Yes, the same people. And they are my two spirit guides. And do you know them by name? Yes, I do. They're my great grandparents. Really? Yes, who died in the house that I am still living at right now. Are they there now? Yes. Yes, I know. I'm, yes, I'm talking to you, yes. <laughs> they're, they're touching my arm. Oh, cool. That's nice. That's nice. So you were pretty close with them? Yes. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's a it's a nice um it's a nice idea that they're still there. Say hello from me, all the way from New Zealand. I am picking up on something here. Um, yeah. Do you feel that you're being whacked or goosebumps or something behind you? Me. Yes. No, not really. I see um a face. Is this guy? <laughs> No, yes, that guy. When I see a, a, a face. Well, I mean, it's, it's quite a, quite interesting because this room, the room that I'm in here at the moment, is actually my haunted room. It's um, I'm a uh, haunted object. I guess I guess you'd say collector. Um, most of these objects have been given to me um, by people that have wanted to get rid of them. I have everything from you know dolls like this. And they're all supposed to be haunted. Um, That's what I thought. Uh, so I keep them in the, all in this room. And I have to say, this room is the coldest room in the house. It is icy cold. Um, and there's my, my room is the most coldest room in the whole house. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? You have 
anything to do with hauntings, it's always icy cold. But yeah, there's a lot of items in here that were given to me um, from fearful families that wanted to get rid of them. And so I, I keep them in my room. I call it my research room. It, it's kind of a research room where I can put everything together and monitor them with cameras and things. Yeah, I like that doll. Those are creepy. Look this one here, this little one here. The oh, other one. Which one? Um, that one there, the big one. That one. Behind uh, that doll that you just picked up. This one? This one. Is there a doll behind the white dress doll? That one. Yeah, that one. That's Chucky. That's Chucky. That's my little Chucky. He's not haunted. He's just, I like Chucky. <laughs> oh, yeah, Chucky. <laughs> he's just my Chucky doll. He, he's not, he's uh, one of the, the few in here that aren't haunted, apparently. I, I just like horror movies. I caught some amazing. I caught some, one of the best pictures at Hinsdale House in Wildwood. Can I, let's, how do you screen share? Can I screen share on this? I think so. I haven't tried it. Give it a go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Just of course my internet is slow. <laughs> oh. Which well, here's a good picture right here. This one was at Hinsdale House in the cross space, which you can see ahead. That's the core space. That's pretty cool. That's interesting. So now here, here's a, one of the, my best evidence. This is why wood. You can see two people in a four-legged animal, and that was on the second floor. And I took it with my eye on light. That's pretty cool. Two people and a four-legged animal, you say? Hmm. No. We got. Is a really nice video. That's my team member that's walking. I hate my internet. Here we go, I'm going to play it in. This was at the Hansdale house. I was using my IR light with my laser grids. My team member took a couple of steps on the left, and there was something on the right, which I don't know how anybody could walk on the bed. My team member, then on the right side, you can see a shadow going by. Hmm. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I'll have to go and have a look at your website in more detail. And we got some screams. We got 
spirit can get up out. Got a camp meow in. <laughs> we got a lot of good evidence. Cool. Now here's a good one. You can see somebody sticking their head out of the window. This was on the second floor at Wildwood. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's great. I'll, I'll have a look at your website and I'll, I'll put some links up so people can um, can check you out better. How can we make this paranormal field, the research field, uh, progress further and really go forward with our research? What needs to be That's done? A good, That's a very good question. What needs to be done? We need to take it seriously. Um, talk to get evidence actually put it this way I use a ghost box and try to talk with them nicely and get to know them nicely to move forward and stuff like that and you do not want to post fake evidence that's a no no yeah. mm. lots of people out there post fake evidence like um oh my god my move my door is moving you don't know if the wind blew it or if it's paranormal or somebody pushed it so you have to be careful to move forward and not prove fake things. Mm -hmm. That's right. There are a lot of people out there trying to be celebrities and trying to get famous from the yes. paranormal, which is a shame. It's a shame. You know, people think it's something paranormal. If something moves, it could be the wind or something else. Mm -hmm. We always like tell people... We always tell people just if something happens in your house, just stop and think and just think about it. Think about what happened and what could possibly have happened there. Don't just assume straight away. Yes, that's true. Mm. It's important to think, hey, I reckon. Just use your brain. Yeah, use your brain. Stupidity, people. All right, Timothy, I'm going to let you go now. It's been awesome talking to you, man. We should stay in Come touch. On, can we talk even more? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there? Oh, it's like 9.20. Oh, that's not too bad, eh? What do you want to talk about? We can talk Wait, about what whatever you, you want. I don't know what do you want to talk about. Okay. Some paranormal. I want to talk about ghosts. I want to talk. I want to talk ghosts and paranormal. I want to know what you guys do over there. How many people in your team? About like five. But here's here's another thing. I keep um, letting people go because they don't want to listen, and they block me for messaging them because I told them where were you so they deleted me and blocked me for no reason yeah and it's really hard it's really hard to find got to members. find the right people but now I have the right people that will come and stuff good yeah it takes a long time to get the right team the right mix of people eh for a a proper yes, it does. research team. It's very hard. A lot of people think it's very easy and that you can just start up a team just like that. And it's not like that. 
in reality, it takes years. Yes, it does. I mean, I've been doing my team. I've been running my team for about about ten years now, and it's taken a long time to get the the mix of people that we have now. We yes, that's connect, true. I'm still not quite finished. A few people. Yeah, there are a lot of people that just want to do it for thrills, uh, as more of a social event. They're, they're, they're not really into the research and the work. Um, they're more enthusiasts, I guess. They're more into the spookiness of it all do you believe in spirit attachments do you think spirits can attach themselves to people or objects yes they can attach to anybody or anything and they're also animal spirits animals can have spirits Like, um, I see my dog um, as a spirit coming to the house and walking by. Sometimes I can see. Why don't we see dinosaur spirits? That's a good question. I have no idea. Hmm. I've often thought about that. <laughs> no. My question is, let's see what Google has to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, my theory about that that one is that mate, perhaps energy just fizzles out in time. Perhaps they are ghosts at one point, but that their energy, because it's hundreds of millions of years old, maybe it just fizzles out and we can't see it anymore, perhaps. I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe Why energy. don't we see dinosaur spirits? <laughs> and it's not talking to me. I like when it talks. <laughs> Technology, eh? Do dinosaurs have spirits? <laughs> I guess, I guess Google doesn't know it. <laughs> it's a big mystery. <laughs> That's right. See, Google doesn't have all the answers. Oh, I'm pretty sure they know who my name is. Oh yeah. What is my name? Do you remember my name? Your name is Timothy. Oh. Oh, they're watching. They're watching you. That's creepy. This is... Sure. What should I call you? You'd like me to call you Google Cast. Is that right? <laughs> no. All right. What should I call you? Booga 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 Joe Schmo. You'd like me to call you Buka 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 on Jewish rules. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Okay, I'll call you Buka 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 on Jewish rules from now on. Uh, My name is Buka Buka. <laughs> Hours of entertainment. Oh, yeah. Okay, man. We'll leave it at that. We're, we're talking rubbish now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're talking rubbish. Okay, Timothy, I'm going to go. It's been lovely talking to you. And Good I'm going to share you too. with the world. And hopefully you can, if you have any more success, any, any more um, cool evidence coming in, just fire it over my way and show me, okay? Sounds great. Cool. Okay, man. Great talking to you. Stay in touch, okay? Okay, sounds good. You too. Thanks, Timothy. See you, man. Bye. Bye-bye.
Thank you.